Let's take a look at the history of the Federation of Kenya Employers. You registered in 1959 to address employers' concerns. In, in your view, do you think you've been able to achieve this role? Yes, the Federation of Kenya Employers has uh, played a very effective role in being the voice of employers here in Kenya. It's actually a trade union for employers. Most people don't know that. We are registered as a trade union. So our purpose is to provide a platform for employers to engage amongst themselves and also to lobby government and speak on issues that uh, they think are important, which influence the climate in which business is done. So if you look at the growth of the Federation in the last 53 years, and the fact that all the large corporates and uh, all the sectors are represented on our board, and the caliber of participation by industry chiefs on our board, then I would say yes, we, we've done a good job. And how does Kenya fare when it comes to issues to do with labor productivity, relations as well as fair work ethics in the country? Kenya does not have statistics really uh, covering all sectors to show what the productivity levels are. But Kenya has consistently increased the wages that it pays its workers. So it is said that we are a very expensive country to operate in if you compare us in the East African region. But we have a very highly skilled um, quality of, of labor. We have good people, people who understand the job, people who are well educated, and people who are exposed. So from a point of view of quality of labor, then we are, good, we are a good country to be in. But from a point of view of the cost of that labor, then we are not as competitive as we should be. Looking at recent statistics, which indicate about 10.96 million people had been employed in the year 2010, what role is FKE playing to address this imbalance? We know already there, Kenya has about 40 million people. That means we have a large population, um, which means there is a lot of unemployment in the country. Well, as a body, we keep tabs on the statistics to keep uh, bringing to the attention of government the fact that we have a fairly young population. The government knows this, of course, because it has the statistics. We have about 20 million people who are in the working population, 15 to 64 and only 12.7 of those are in employment. But if you look at formal employment, barely a quarter of that number are in formal employment. So our engagement is with government is to see that there is enhanced collaboration between the institutions of higher learning, tertiary institutions, and industry to influence the kind of curriculums and education that our young people go through to prepare them better for the world of work. But there's a lot of improvement to be done in that area because there, is, there isn't as good a connection or a discussion between industry and uh, the learning institutions to ensure that our graduates come out ready for the world of work. Moving on, we've seen our employers in recent years complaining that um, the universities are not churning out uh, graduates that are, you know, who are meeting the industry expectations as well as skills. Do you share similar views? Yes, unfortunately, most of the graduates coming out of our learning institutions, out of our universities, the vocational and technical training centers, are not always fit uh, for purpose, if I may put it that way. Employers have to incur more money, training them on actual skills on the job, uh, getting them uh, to a situation where they have practical experience that is required for them to perform. And this, again, is a reflection of the fact that we do not have good engagement between industry and uh, the learning institutions to expose our young people to practical aspects of work. So largely what they go through is theoretical training. They're bright young people. It's not because they're, they're substandard. They're brilliant young people. It's the process we take them through, the learning process, that does not expose them to the world of work and give them the practical skills they need. So as employers, we've been complaining because we have to incur more money after you've recruited this brilliant young man or young lady, you have to train her or him again to get the practical um, tips that they need for them to perform well on the job. Now, FK is one of the players that has come out against the move uh, by the government, which recently announced a 13.1% minimum wage increment during these years, Liberty. Why are you opposed to this move? We do not believe that wages should chase inflation. You'll never get it right. You cannot keep increasing salaries because the inflation rate is higher or the cost of borrowing has gone up. What you need to do is to address the capacity of that person who's earning the minimum wage to buy the basic commodities that they need to buy. You need to price our essential 
commodities and products at a level which is affordable. If you're paying 50 shillings for a packet of milk today and, and a loaf of bread, that's just not realistic.